You know, ever since I got in the SER5 Max in for testing, I've kind of become obsessed with just trying out different games on it in comparison to the SER6. I've just been blown away by the results that I've been getting here, where it really seems like that extra TDP brings out a lot in the SER5 Max. Now, I've been testing a wide variety of different games, so we're just going to break these things down into different categories, and this is going to be essentially an assortment of different esports and competitive shooters. There's going to be a handful of them just so that we could get kind of an idea of how these systems perform in these really popular titles. So the first one we're going to be taking a look at is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. We are running this with the lowest in-game graphics settings. And on both systems, this was already the first surprise to me. And not just in the fact that the SCR5 Max ended up actually winning, but by a pretty decent margin on both the FPS average and the 1% lows. This overall is telling me is that the clock speed of the CPU is extremely important here, even in a situation where you have an ultra low end iGPU. Now, to be fair, what is in the 6600H is pretty decent it's not exactly bottom of the barrel but it's not far from it it's far closer to the worst gpu on the market right now than it is to the 4090 but already this was such a surprise to me to see that the 5800h would actually end up winning by this much but it really seems like clock speed is going to be a very important factor while looking at a lot of these titles and that does become immediately apparent when we take a look at Valorant, another title that ends up giving us a similar situation of a pretty noticeable gap between the 6600H and the 5800H. And again, this is after a three game average for all of these games because of the fact that they don't have built-in benchmarks there's a lot of variety and a lot of these titles don't even let you choose what exactly the map you're going to be playing on is so we do a three game average on each individual title on each system to get an average in terms of the performance and again consistently the 5800h was just winning in this title that cpu is really putting in a lot of work and it makes sense because we are running the game at the lowest graphics setting, so already a very low-end iGPU is doing the bare minimum in a title like this. So it's a very interesting result so far. So the next title that I took a look at was PUBG Battlegrounds, since it is to this day still one of the most popular games on Steam. And this one ended up being far closer than the others, though it still did end up being a on paper win for the 5800h i would argue that at these levels of performance they are practically identical but the 5800h did after a three game average end up providing a slightly higher fps average in general neither is giving you a 60 fps average but both were at least decently playable but again another situation where the 5800h is actually coming out on top and the 6600h is just not doing it it's really surprising to see and honestly i'm kind of really impressed by what b-link was able to do here with the ser5 max although you could also look at it as i wish that they had just turned up the tdp for the ser6 because if this 6600h could actually end up matching it in terms of tdp maybe it would actually stay more competitive but as it stands right now the 5800h is actually surprisingly coming out on top so far those have been some very interesting results so i decided to take a look at fortnite here running with the performance api though we do have the maximum render distance and we do have textures set to their maximum but again it is the performance api and like this the level of performance that we were getting again it was having the 5800h come out on top of though both of them were giving some pretty disappointing one percent lows that seems to just be something related with fortnite i have yet to try any system whatsoever that doesn't have at least some issues with one percent lows in fortnite fortnite is one of those games where i didn't even end up doing a three game average i did a five game average because usually the first or second game that you play on fortnite is practically useless so it's not even really a five game average it is a three game average but i ended up playing five games 
on each system because of the fact that Fortnite just has this problem of the first or second game just having so many performance issues that it becomes a real problem. After that, things do level off, but in both of these games, it wasn't exactly a great experience. But the 5800H does actually make a meaningful improvement in the fact that the 1% lows are at least now above 30, which I consider to be the absolute minimum. Anything below that and you're really getting into some dangerous territory of getting into unplayability. The last game that I took a look at was Overwatch 2 running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR 2.2 set to essentially the equivalent of the performance preset which is 50 percent render resolution that's about as low as you can set it in the in-game menu and we do have the sharpness set all the way to its highest and i think that for the vast majority of people this is really the way to go when using fsr just use the lowest possible preset that you can utilize without it looking absolutely horrible to your eyes and more than likely just raising the sharpness is going to be good enough to make it look decent to you but this was about the only one of the titles that we tested here where the 6600h actually ended up coming out on top and that was really the most surprising thing about all of these different tests I kind of wanted to just test out some of the most popular titles because of the fact that one, they are very much designed to run on lower end hardware, as you can tell by the fact that most of the performance numbers that we saw here are actually more than playable on both systems. So these are th exactly the types of titles that you would actually be playing on these systems. So it's interesting to see that the 5800H actually is what comes out on top here, because that means that if you're actually looking to play these types of games on one of these systems, well, now the 5800H just seems like a no brainer in the SER5 Max. And that was just not the outcome that I was expecting to see here at all. These little systems really just continue to surprise me in terms of the performance. Sometimes we'll get titles where the 6600H just comes out with a clear win. And then there will be just these other random titles where the 5800H just takes a dominating lead. And it seems like at least with these esports and competitive centric titles, the 5800H and its emphasis on just having as powerful of a CPU as possible is the winning strategy. And that's not at all the result that I was expecting to see. And that's what makes this kind of stuff really fun. Because on paper, you might think that something will go one way, but then you actually do the real world testing of it. And it's just a completely different outcome. So I hope you found this interesting. I'm definitely going to keep looking at a variety of different titles between these two because they are so fascinating because they are so comparable in a lot of ways but then in others there is just these drastic differences that lead to vastly different outcomes from title to title it's been really fun to test so i'll see you guys next time